Hello everyone, Robert Rambles here, and welcome back to WoW TBC Classic and our Shaman Hard Mode playthrough. I think today we're actually going to go check out Vanquishing the Betrayers. That's the Kul Tiran enemies over here in the fort that we can see off in the distance. But first, we're going to go ahead and kill a few boars, and we're going to get level 8. And we're going to make sure to train our level 8 spells before we try to head in there. Uh, Encroachment and Zalazane are still orange, so we're not going to work on those just yet. Encroachment's actually over here to the east, or west I believe. And I was going to do the stuff on the Echo Islands, including Machina's Skull, but I'm going to wait until Zalazane is no longer orange to do that. So we are going to try to work on vanquishing the betrayers and then we'll see if we can head down to the centaur area and find all their plans and burn them but yeah as i said we are going to get we are going to try to get our level first shouldn't be too hard we have a little bit of rest experience And as we get things going here today, I did want to say thank you guys so much for your continued support and for all the comments you share on the videos. I really do appreciate it, and I love hearing from you guys, so thanks again. Going to try not to forget to skin anything today. We will see how that goes. Looking at our inventory, we're also going to have to make sure that we sell everything when we go back to train. Because our bags are not quite clean. There's a couple things in there we can get rid of. Alright, there we go. That's level 8. Luckily, we didn't have to go far and our trainer is right inside the building here. Looks like he has an upcoming quest for us. I'm assuming we're going to have to get to level 9 or 10 before we can get that. But look at this, he has a lot of things to train us on. Earthshock rank 2, Lightning Bolt rank 2, Stoneclaw Totem. Summons a Stoneclaw Totem with 50 health at the feet of the caster for 15 seconds that taunts creatures within 8 yards. That could be useful if we pull an ad. Lightning Shield and Rockbiter re Weapon Rank 2. Let's go ahead and get this all out on our bars here. So Lightning Shield causes 13 nature damage to the attacker on hit, but I, I think it only has 3 charges. So I don't know if I'm going to spam this and keep it up, or if we're just going to use it on more difficult encounters. Let's get Rockbiter Weapon Rank 2, and let's recast that. We also have Stone Skin Totem. Let's do something like this. It's probably going to take me a while to figure out where I want all my buttons. I try to get them to where they feel natural. I find that having good keybinds really is like a make or break on whether or not you're going to enjoy a class. Definitely hitting a little bit harder with those uh, next ranks of spells there. That was pretty good. Uh, we didn't empty our inventory. I don't really dare to go out without doing that.
And yeah, for those of you wondering, I basically have zero short-term memory. I don't want to know the count of how many times I've said I need to do something or was going to do something and then five seconds later forgot to do it. It's probably a pretty high count. Usually I do remember. Not always timely though. Alright, let's sell the cloak we don't need. We are going to get rid of the bread that we can't eat. We didn't craft that. Get rid of that. Render's target unable to move for 10 seconds. That could actually be handy. 10 seconds. That's long enough to get a heal off. It's long enough to run away. And I think that should be good. Let's move our crafting stuff up here. Whoops, I need to sell the jerky and the scorpid eye. Well, if it comes down to two inventory spots, then that's my bad. We'll hope that it doesn't. We have quite a few spaces free. We should be okay to investigate over here. We have to fight 19 guys at least. I have a feeling we're going to have to fight a few more than that to make our way up to Lieutenant Benedict. The room that he's in, I remember there being at least one two-pull, so we might have a chance then to use Stoneclaw Totem and see if it can keep that second enemy off of us. We are putting out a lot more damage now, but at the cost of a great deal more mana. So maybe we'll do... Maybe we'll do one and one, and then we'll melee. One lightning bolt. One earth shock. And then we'll melee for the rest, because our melee is uh, pretty good as well. The shield stays up, but I I don't know if it has any effect once those charges are done. Let's get a little bit of mana back here before we proceed. Well, we're not going to get too much back. Time to get into our first aid and make some bandages here.
kind of hoping that there's not an enemy right around the corner here that we can't see that's going to pull with this one, but we'll find out in a second. Looks like we're good. Now let's be careful peeking our head in here. Uh, there's nothing that way. And there is someone over here to our right. Yeah, that's really close to us. Um, yeah, it's kind of a surprise we didn't pull him before that, actually. Let's drag him back a little bit so he can't run to his buddy back there as easily. I don't need the guys back here, so I'm tempted to leave them alone. That's probably going to be a two-pull no matter how we look at it. Let's try to make this a single pull. And drag her back here. There we go. Now I think there's one that paths. Yeah, there he is. Ah, oh, almost. I do want to get him before he goes away. So far, everything is going really smooth. It's going so smooth, in fact, that I'm kind of starting to get worried. Somehow we got her by herself. That was sheer luck, I'm sure. Let's pull down here. Two spells resisted, though. That's our karma, I guess. Instantly coming back for not pulling an extra enemy there. Alright, we're 8 out of 8 for the Marines. We need two more Sailors, and I think Lieutenant Benedict is going to be right up on the platform back here. It's not a stage, I'm not really sure what you would call it. Just an elevated area in the room, I guess. Now I am going to rest for a second here and get some mana back. We're going to focus on Lieutenant Benedict. If this guy pulls, we're going to drop our Stoneclaw Totem and I'm just going to hope that it aggros him for a few seconds. If that doesn't work, then we'll try the really sticky glue. What's the range on that, I wonder? Oh, that actually worked really well. We'll throw down Stone Skin for a second here. Alright, he is attacking the Stone Claw Totem. That's perfect. We don't have any mana though, so we're gonna get in here and start meleeing. Alright, it does keep taunting him. That's actually really good. I like that a lot. Alright, that was not bad at all. Now, I think that if we go up to the top of this place, there's a chest up there. Uh, no, we're not going to pull her yet. We're going to drink. Yeah, I think there's a chest. If we go up these stairs and go up to the top, there should be kind of like a catwalk up there and then a tower. 
Uh, where did she go? Did she go up those stairs? Benedict's chest. Is this an item that begins a quest? It looks like it. Let's take a look here. You open the aged and weathered envelope and discover an official looking document. You recognize the seal of Admiral, Admiral Proudmore. This looks important. Perhaps Garthok, the commander of Razor Hill, would be interested in having this information. Okay, he shield bashed us. How rude. Let's accept the quest, and then we will deal with this guy. Just like so. Okay. Uh, hmm. It's probably not incredibly smart to jump down here. The question is, how many guys are going to have a respawn if we walk out? Nobody yet, which is actually a surprise. Yeah, wow, we managed to clear that place without anybody respawning. Oh, at the very last second, the guy at the front respawns. That's the first time that we've kind of cleared an area before the respawns happen. Now, ideally, we would have had like anywhere from 40 to 60 more seconds before getting any respawns. Let's angle ourselves this way. We'll take out one more sailor on our way out here. And that will be quest complete. And this is going back to Razor Hill. Well, we aggroed an extra. We have zero mana. Well, the good news is we had more than enough bag space. The bad news is we really didn't get a lot of loot that we can sell. Although we have almost seven silver, and that's not too shabby. I do want to fight a few things on the way back here to get some leather going. We need to start skilling up our leather working so that we can buy the next couple of patterns. And make some more gear for ourselves. Because we're doing quite a bit of damage now, which is great. And we're not really reliant on our gear to do damage. But we want to not get hit as hard as we're getting hit by some things, so... The more gear we have, the more armor we have, the better.
Oh, that's good to know. I actually didn't realize that in classic Earthshock also interrupts spell casting and prevents that school of spell from being cast again for two seconds. I did not remember that, so I'm glad that I read that. I was actually just checking the damage between Lightning Bolt and Earthshock. It seems like we're better off just to focus on Lightning Bolt, especially at range. Earthshock can be really good if we're trying to interrupt a caster or if we just need a little bit of extra damage and we need it really quickly or if we're in melee and we're getting hit really hard and we need a little bit of extra damage but otherwise if we're at range still and they're not hitting us there really isn't a good reason to use Earthshock. It might have a higher chance to crit but it doesn't deal a significant amount more damage than Lightning Bolt does. Uh, it does, however, the point of that was that it does, however, cost twice as much mana. So we'll try to stick with Lightning Bolt whenever we can. What do you need? From the wreckage, one of my wor one of my most observant scouts brings back word that the wreckage of Proudmore's fleet still remains off the coast of Durator, just east of Tiragard Keep. It is no secret that the humans in alliance with those foul little creatures known as gnomes, have an advanced knowledge of mechanics. We must have a complete understanding of all our potential enemies, and our people will benefit from this new knowledge as well. Swim through the wreckage and retrieve for me the tools of the alliance. Three gnomish tools from the wreckage off the coast. Strength. Okay, so that's gonna be like out here. Maybe we do that before we head back to the south. And then we have Admiral's Orders, which I think actually also goes to this guy. Let's double- yep, here we go. Blood and thunder. This does not bode well at all. You were wise to bring this information to my attention. Humans cannot be trusted. We fought alongside them with a weary heart, knowing they would betray us one day. Admiral Proudmore's death was not enough to stop his legacy of deceit. The human scum had his plans well laid out before he ever met his demise. His reign won't even die with Benedict, it seems. Who knows how long it will be before the next waves of Proudmore's men land upon our shores. We need to get these orders to Vol'jin and Orgrimmar immediately. He can be found in Thrall's chamber. Uh, yeah, we're gonna have to go to Orgrimmar anyway at some point to go to the Leatherworking Trainer. So we will try to do that then. Uh, for now, let's vendor everything we don't need. Speak, friend. This is actually really useful, especially since we can throw it for what seems like quite a good range. So we're going to hang on to that for now, even though it's kind of eating up space in our inventory. We have 10 silver, which kind of begs the question, should I... Should I purchase another bag? Go forth to victory. Uh, which would be something I could do, but I actually don't know where the general goods vendor is here. Alright, let's hold off for now. We have plenty of space for the moment. I'm just gonna, gonna kinda head to the southeast here. I don't remember this quest too well. I remember that post-cataclysm there are water elementals out here or something like that, but I don't think that's the case back in Burning Crusade. So we'll have to see.
I do see some shipwrecks off the coast here, so I'm hopeful that indicates that we can do this quest in that area. That was a big resist there on our first lightning bolt. Leatherworking will get a little bit easier once everything is at a high enough level or our skinning is at a high enough level that we're actually getting leather off of most of the things that we skinned. Right now we're getting a lot of leather scraps, uh, which is not as helpful. Though I will say, on the Troll Shaman, I feel like I have access, like, easy access to a lot more skinnable enemies than we did on the Night Elf, on the Rogue. I think part of that, though, is how the zone is laid out. This zone is much more open. You can see greater distances. It's a little bit more visible because of the lighting, whereas in Teldrassil, everything was dark. There were tons of huge trees uh, just blocking your line of sight for basically for everything. So I felt like I had to put a lot more effort into finding things we could actually skin. Here, with the ability to skin the scorpids and the boars, it's like basically a free-for-all. We could skin all day if we wanted to. Alright, let's head out here and have a little look under the water. I think that's where we're going to find the gnomish tools. I feel like I can barely see under the water here. We do have some aggressive Makura clackers. Oh, hi there. Speaking of which. Let's not drown for our first death. That would be a little bit embarrassing. Oh, jeez. Did not even see you there. Alright, there is a Gnomish Toolbox. Oh, there's another one down here. Yeah, they're pretty hard to spot. Now that we know what we're looking for, that should make it a little bit easier. Look at that, we found all three of them out in this one wreck. That's actually very, very convenient. Uh, if we can get back to this one. There we go. Alright, that's three out of three. Another quest knocked out. Let's, uh, we can hearth back. I think I'm gonna hearth back because I do want to get up to Orgrimmar and that's gonna take a minute. So let's save ourselves a little bit of time here. The disadvantage of not running back is that we're not fighting stuff and skinning it along the way, but I feel like that's okay for the time being. Let's get this turned in and then we're going to run up to Orgrimmar. Lokta, 
Your recovery mission was a success, Shaman. I will see to it that these tools get to Argomar with the next caravan. Uh, let's take the mail to sell. The horde. And yeah, we are going to run uh, all the way up to Ogremar. It is a little bit of a sprint. Take us a little bit of time. Unfortunately, there's not a lot going on along the way because we're down in this in this ravine where the road is at. We don't have a lot of access to skinning things. I probably could cut through here, but I think this is all Razor Mane, guys. Uh, that we need for the Koklar. Nope, that's Centaurs. Here we go. For encroachment, we have all the Razor Mane Quillbor. And I'm pretty sure they're in this area, so I don't think running through there right now would net us a lot of skinnable enemies. And I'm not quite ready for us to take those guys on yet. We will be doing that soon, though. We'll probably do that next, and then head back down for the Centaur plans. We can now do Zalazane with a little bit of confidence, since it is yellow. Fizzle's Claw. Thunder Ridge to the northwest. Maybe somewhere over here? I'm not really familiar with that one. But eventually we'll explore this entire area and reveal everything on the map. Kind of wish there was at least like some boars in here to fight, but yeah, there's really nothing down here except you can take one of the paths off to the right and you can fight harpies. We're going to have a quest for them later on. And eventually this guy right over here, the goblin here, will have a quest for us. Oh, he has it right now. Let's just pick it up so that we have it. How you doing? I'm Rezlak, one of Gazlo's boys. Boss sent me to help the orcs here in Duratar. Things have been going good, except for the caravans. Can't manage to keep them safe. Makes my job a little harder, you know. The last shipment they promised it'd get through was snatched by the Dustwind Harpies of, where was it? Razorwind Canyon? I gotta have those supplies or I'll never get anything done. Follow the big canyon to the south and you'll find a ravine cut right into the west and east sides of the wall. That's the path that we saw. Be good. I thought there was a kill quest as well. This is for supplies. I'm gonna hold off a little bit and see if we get a harpy quest from Razor Hill before we do this winds in the desert. Oh, you're level nine. A little bit tougher than the ones we fought previously. A little bit beefier, too. Some more hit points. Now that boar meat we're going to actually be able to cook, so that's good. We have some supplies to do some cooking. We're doing good on not really needing to eat or drink. I'm pretty happy so far with how we've been able to kind of keep ourselves going with minimal supplies. It's been good. Alright, I think the leather working trainer is all the way in the back. If I remember correctly, let's go ahead and check again. Uh, he's not too far back.
I'm hoping that I'll have a couple more patterns for us to make uh, some pants, maybe some gloves and boots, but we might be a long way off still. We'll have to just take a look and see at what skill levels we can learn those things so we know. Looking a little empty today in Orgrimmar. Alright, level 15 we can make pants, 25 we can make a belt, and then everything else is going to be much, much higher than that. Can we get to level 15? With honor. Uh, well, we're at 8, so let's see here. Let's make our, our light leather out of scraps first. And then we'll make some light armor kits if we need some more skill ups. We'll make two of these, that'll get us to 15, hopefully, if we get skill ups for both. Strength and honor. So let's train the pants. To We're gonna make one of those. And there we go, we're looking good. And then I think that we do the rest of our skill points just with the light armor kits here. And that'll get us to 26, maybe. And then we're going to use these. We can use them on the chest, hands, legs, or feet to increase our armor by 8. Definitely want to get that going. We have the pattern for the leather belt now, but we don't have any light leather at the moment. But we'll be able to make that pretty soon. Let's go ahead and apply these. We can do pants... Boots. We can do chest. Uh, can we do bracers? I think it said gloves. Can't do bracers. Can't do the cloak. So that is all we can do for the time being. And guys, I think this is going to be a good place to take a little bit of a break. I will try to do all the crafting at the end of each episode. So that we'll have kind of a expected cadence to things here. But yeah, we're going to leave it here for today. When we come back, we will head back down to the south and we'll work on encroachment. Then we'll go deal with the centaur plans and see where that gets us. I'm having a lot of fun with the shaman. I hope you guys are as well. Let me know what you think. I do love to hear from you guys. As always, thank you so much for being here. Take care of yourselves out there and take care of each other. And we will see you back in Azeroth sometime soon. Bye now.